was thinking about restoration when that really came to me. And uh, restoration, there's so many things that involve restoration because God grants favor uh, to his people. I was thinking about, obviously, many of you who go to work, you have an, employ, uh, an employer, and, um, and God says, I want to bless uh, 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 my people, uh, those who like to have ungodly employers, you work in an ungodly environment. Um, your, your work is part of the plan of God and what he wants to do in and through your life. Um, we cannot just expect um, for us to have favour with our employers if we're not diligent in our work. There are many people that jump on the bandwagon of God's promises and declaring breakthrough in their place of work, declaring promotions, but their work is substandard. And God is not going to bless that. You are, uh, your head is in the sky. And um, it's, this is wishful thinking. And, and, and God doesn't work in that way. God wants to bless us uh, tremendously. But he expects us um, uh, uh, to, to be doing certain things and to know certain things. And so what we're going to be doing, and we're going to be elaborating more on this, um, because it not only applies to your uh, place of work, but business, what you're putting your hands to, what kind of a person are you, are you lazy, are you diligent, are you hard working, um, um, do you only work um, hard when um, you're in view of uh, your bosses or, or, or whatever, uh, whatever you do, is it, is it substandard? Is it, uh, is it a spirit of excellence that you have there? People don't realize, Christians don't realize that God looks on all of these things. God cannot give you favor in your place of work if you are turning up late. If you've been given a work to do and it's substandard and you're praying, God bless me, God bless me. Lord, I receive favor. I receive favor in my place of work. It, 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 it's nothing is going to happen. You are just wasting your time. And so I want us to look at a character, uh, a, a great uh, a person, a uh, man of God uh, in the Bible. And I want to look at some traits that this person had, that God was able to favor him immensely, exponentially. And um, so let's turn to the book of Daniel. Let's look at Brother Daniel, shall we? Wow, this is uh, a, an excellent character. Um, and, and, and there's so much we can draw out of this person in, 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 and look at our own lives. And uh, we, we will see that if we're asking God to bless us, uh, we, we can see if we will meet up to that criteria. If we're asking God to give us favor, you know, just by reading this person, uh, 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 we can see if we meet up to that uh, standard at all. And um, God wants to bring promotion in our place of work for a reason. And there is a reason. Uh, some of you, obviously, a lot of you here know about Daniel and, um, and um, working for... Uh, uh, a pagan king working for a pagan king um, and some of you, you, you you're working uh, for an employer that doesn't probably believe in God and, and uh, some of you may be ill-treated um, and um, in that uh, place of employment um, how must you behave? what must you do? Um, and I, I, it takes me back when I used to work um, um, for several places, um, but uh, I remember vividly in place uh, Camden Town Hall, um, and um, and all that went on. I remember God spoke to me very early on in that uh, in my place of work, and He told me that uh, you are training. Your place of work is a place of training. And, um, and how you behave, how you respond, uh, things that happens 
and um, I went through all the different conspiracy and lies and disciplinary and um, see God brought me through that triumphantly and now that strengthened my faith and, and I remember the work before the Department of Environment uh, I, I worked for and, and what happened there as well and um, with one of my boss and how he was just uh, really nasty to me and I was just about to get mad and, and um, when I was told what he's actually doing because at that time I was um, we were newly married and um, and the calls were coming in for us to go and view a house and, and that was okay then uh, but he never informed me and it was another manager that told me and I almost lost it and I don't know what I was going to do I was going to come towards him and he did, he, this manager's held me I says, no, that's exactly what he wants you to do. And I thought, oh gosh, I felt so bad. I felt so ashamed that it was a, a non-Christian that was actually, God was using to say, don't. And, and, um, and what, what I had, and then what God told me to do through prayer and intercession, then went uh, to see him and, and, and the unbelievable thing that I saw before my very eyes when I addressed him in what he is doing. Um, because he, he, he was a very racist manager and I, I confronted him. I said, that spirit of racism in you. And when I said the word, no word of a lie, church, I, I was baffled at what I was seeing. I couldn't fully understand what was happening as I was speaking to him as though someone was literally hitting him. I said, when there's a spirit of racism, he went like that in his chair. And, I, and then I said something, and he said, but God loves you. And by the time I finished, he was like this on the chair. And I was seeing this, and I didn't quite know what was going on, because I've never seen anything like it in my life. And, um, <laughs> and after that, the phone rings, Derek, and he will run out of the office. You know, when he saw me coming up the stairs, he would go on the other side like this, and he'd just look at me like this. And I just think, I felt so embarrassed for him. You know why he was, I mean, he was the boss above the other boss. And he was literally petrified because of what happened in the office there. So, I, 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 so much experience of the Lord, um, uh, that I received whilst in secular work, working for secular people, non-Christians, and, and what the Lord had to really teach me uh, in how to behave, in how to love, in how to uh, uh, make sure my work is up to scratch. And even when I was accused of doing something that I did not do and was brought in a disappearing action, and I, I just said one word and all of a sudden the fear of God just came down on uh, my supervisor when I said, why are you lying? You know, and, and bam, all of a sudden she just started to shake. And the uh, two other managers that were there um, just looking at her, and the next minute uh, the case was dismissed. And he went throughout Camden Council, Derek has won, it's, it's never been done before. Um, church, God wants to use us, God wants us to be a reflection of Himself uh, in an ungodly environment. Because he has souls that he loves, that he wants to save. And if our lifestyle is bringing a reproach, or you, our lifestyle causes the unbeliever to curse God because of our attitude, it is not good. And um, it's amazing because years after, I would meet up with a, a number, or I would see them uh, in places, and they said, I'm a Christian now, do you remember me? I'm a Christian, you said this, and you said that, I'm a Christian now. And uh, I thought, wow, all oh, these seeds that were sown, and, and God is one that brings about the increase. Uh, we don't realize, like, sometimes we don't think our jobs is spiritual. We just see it as a job. And so we behave anyhow. Have bad attitude. Uh, oh, the boss, the supervisor, the work colleague behaves in a nasty way. Then we react in the same way. And we don't see that there's repercussions spiritually when that happens. 
Because God expects a different conduct, a different attitude, a different behavior from you. Why do we have these scriptures? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. Being a light, our slogan, it's a scriptural slogan, being a light in darkness. Many of you are in places of work where it's darkness. Perhaps you're the only Christian in your department. What kind of a light are you? Are you a light? Is there a difference? If your life and those who are not a Christian, are you a testimony? Well, you don't know what, it doesn't matter. I don't know what they're like. It's irrelevant. What are you like? What are you like? I don't have to know what they're like. They could be the worst people around, your managers, your bosses, whatever. What are you like in spite of their behavior, their negativity towards you? Don't you think it's because that you bear the name of Christ? That the enemy is stirring up hostility? against you? Don't you know that your conduct and your life could be a testimony that can lead them to Christ? They will mock you now, but I guarantee you, if you remain faithful, something will happen in their life and they will remember and they will come to you and ask you to pray for them. Daniel chapter 6, shall we? Daniel chapter 6 from verse number 1. We're going to continue this next week, God's willing. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 uh, 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 sestra. That is really administrators, okay? Okay, um, this is the administrator. So imagine um, this was a superpower back then, okay? 120 uh, administrators. Uh, to be and to be over uh, the whole kingdom, and, and, and look at the next verse. And over these three governors, so you got 120 uh, administrators, and the king now selects three governors, of whom Daniel was one. Uh, that means that administrators might give an account to them so that the king will suffer no loss. So uh, so these uh, governors, they will be dealing with tax evasions, fraud, and um, anything going on with the military, and then they will go on and report to one of the three governors, and Daniel was right up there, in a government position, right up there. And he was, he was the king's King's favorite governor. So it, it tells you something about Daniel. It, it's not just God's favor was on him and he was behaving anyhow. There was a reason why he became the king's favorite governor. All right? And so, uh, so that they will give an account of him. So the next verse tells us then this Daniel. Distinguished himself above the governors. So, well, he was just, he stood out exponentially, okay, uh, and, and the administrators, uh, because an excellent spirit, we've, we've heard this word bantered around, excellent spirit. Excellent spirit was in him. Yes, he was hard working. Then you've got to think, okay, such a high position in government over all these uh, administrators um, where bribery was just the norm. People received bribery in governmental position for contracts. This was not found in Daniel. Daniel had an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave for to setting him over the whole realm. So because of how Daniel was with this spirit of excellence, a hard worker, he had giftings and abilities, 
And what he did, he did with all his heart, with all his soul, and he got the king's attention. What are you like? What are you like in your place of work? What time do you show up in the morning? Are you on time? Uh, um, or are you just on time? Or you, you get there late? Um, the work that uh, is given to you to do, how well do you do that work? And, and yet we are asking for God's favour, we are asking for God's blessing. And any promotion and any favour and blessing that God will give, it, it's attached to something, church. It is not just something out of the air that we just pull down. Oh, I, dis I, I declare and I receive divine favour in my place of work with my boss. What are you doing? Daniel got the attention of the king. He became the king's number one governor. And then the king thought, because of how excellent this guy is and what he does, I want to make him governor over the whole kingdom. Now, when you have favor and be given position, there will always be jealous people around that wants to undo you. And this was happening with Daniel. Daniel would have been aware of jealousy. When you stand out above your peers and you get the attention of those uh, authorities uh, that are over you, um, you must expect people are not going to like you. People are not going to love you. People want to, uh, they want to see your demise. Uh, they want to, they would examine and, and look for ways to trip you up. Mm -hmm. And um, this what happened when I was working for the, uh, um, um, for Camden Town Hall in my department. Um, I, I remember one time the Lord, whilst I was working, and he says, Derek, look. It, it just told me, just, I just looked in my department and just looked at those people that were there. And he just said, and I, did, I didn't see anything physically. God was getting my attention. He says, they are plotting against you. And so he said, what you are to do, you are to get up extra early in the morning to pray more. To prepare yourself. Notice, God wasn't going to stop the plot. No weapons formed against you shall prosper. He did not say that he will not stop, that he will stop the weapons. He just said, though it's formed, though it's fashioned against you, though it's plotted, but it will not have its intended purpose, which is for your demise. What are you doing in the time that you have been employed to do? Are you doing the work that you are supposed to do, or are you doing some other work? that you weren't employed to do. <coughs> that happens so much, so much time, so many times. God watches you uh, in, in the things that he, he placed uh, before you. Are you taking things that are not yours? Can God trust you? This is the year of restoration. We want to be blessed. We want to come into blessing. God, can he trust you with position, with authority, with status, with money? What are you like in your place of work, where you are right now? Are you a trusted employee? Can your boss, your manager, whoever, trust you? What are you like? So silent. Wow, I'm touching on something. God is in this place. Let's look at the next verse, shall we? It's so strange how the Lord just, how he brought this to me. And he said to me, there are things that are going on in people's work that are, that are wrong. They're not being the light that they should be. And they're praying that I will bless them. God says, I cannot bless them. And he drops this in my spirit. 
and says, talk about Daniel. He says, this is what I want my people to have. A spirit of excellence. Shortcuts, laziness, won't get us anywhere. Looking for the quickest way out and doing what we're doing, we don't do it with an excellent spirit. And so it's half-hearted. And church, the Lord showed me each one of us has an angel. And that angel records stuff. And it makes sense because the Bible says, you know, that um, the books shall be open. Books and then the book. And the books, plural, are the things that we have done in this body whilst on the earth. If that are wrong. If they're not repented over. And all those things will come uh, before us. And so they are recording us. And when it's time for promotion, like God has on his calendar times of promotion, the angel come and thinking, now it's time. And God says, well, I cannot because they have not been faithful. In other words, delay. Because we have not been faithful in what God has given to us to do. And there are, and we're going to see a a myriad of scriptures concerning what we do with our hands, uh, whether we are employed and we're out there, uh, uh, how and and, uh, well we do what we do or not, and to see if God is going to bless us. And and so the uh, governors and the administration sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom the kingdom okay so his position does this guy take bribe is he honest is he doing what he's supposed to be doing is he a skyver they're looking they're now watching this guy what can we find to stop him being governor over us is we can be done out of a job the king likes him they watch it every move and they look at that concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault. If you were being watched over your work, would there be any fault found in what you do? In what you have been given to do, what you have been employed for a certain amount of hours during that day, during that week. Are you doing what you should be doing or not? Let's take a cue from Daniel, shall we? They could find no charge or fault. They could find no charge or fault with him. I didn't realize they were watching me in my place of work when I was working for Camden, so... Uh, obviously when I'm not there they were probably talking about me but it happened at the end of the year at a Christmas party and they're now getting tipsy on on alcohol yeah? <laughs> so I, I'm there at the Christmas party yeah, they, they, they're knocking back now alcohol and you know when the, the people are tipsy they start saying things yeah. out of the abundance of the heart just whoa, start coming out whoa verbal diarrhea just whoa, coming out you know and, 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 and they just come out and it says We've been watching you, Derek. Why is it that when you come in, you don't swear? You, you're always happy. You're always smiling. You're always happy. And I, I, I was shocked because obviously I didn't expect that. It just came out. It just came out. They must have been talking amongst themselves about my conduct. And then it just came out at the end of year Christmas party. Why is it that you don't come in? Why is it we haven't heard you uh, mention a swear word? Why is it that you're always smiling? I, I couldn't answer. Because <laughs> I, I, was, I was so surprised. Um, and, and it's just the way how it just came out. And I just began to just think, I thought, wow, Lord, so that's what they've been doing. Wow, thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord. This is what's been going on. And I did not know that. What are people saying about you? 
What are people saying about you in, in, in your community? What are people saying about you amongst your family members? You are a Christian. Some of your family members are not a Christian. Or if they are a Christian, they're very shallow. Is there a difference in your life? Is there a testimony that you have? In your place of work, are you the best worker? Are you the best hard worker man? We, we, we have the Bible. Christians should be the best employees in the world. Christians should be the best employees in the world. Because we remember that we are ambassadors wherever we go. We don't take off our Christianity whilst when we walk into our place of work. We are supposed to carry Jesus in that environment. They are supposed to say, fake God's a true Christian. Wow, we have done everything to get that person upset, to get that person to swear, to get that person to retaliate. You know, we're human beings and, you know, our emotions get the better of us. And, and we end up saying things. And I remember uh, uh, saying to them, I said, you know, uh, um, um, I, I'm not perfect. And, and if I behaved in this way, that really happened. I'm sorry. Are, are, we, are we quick to admit that? Or, or is it our stubbornness and our pride? So they cannot see Christ. Because remember, as Christians, none of us are perfect. And we're going to make mistakes in our place of work. Do we go into avoidance, into denial? Or do we admit, yes, that is me. I, I'm sorry, I did, I did do this. I messed up, I made a mistake. Or we just go into denial. All of this has been recorded. What kind of a light are you amongst the unsaved? They are watching you if you are wearing a badge of a Christian. In other words, they know that you are a Christian. Then, boy, you're going to be tried. They are going to test you. They have some kind of an idea of what a Christian is. And so they're going to put temptations there. They're going to try to get you upset just to see how you respond. The conversation that uh, work colleagues have about other work colleagues or their bosses. Uh, uh, how do you respond when you're right there in the midst and they're tearing down the manager, tearing down this person? Are you any different? Or do you spearhead the whole thing? Do you spark up the conversation? Do you join in with the conversation? What difference is there then? In your life, can these people around you come to Christ as a result of your life? You will give an account to your maker for how you lived your life with those of your work colleagues that are not Christian. You are an ambassador of Christ, an ambassador is a representation of their country. Oh Lord, help me Lord. Amen. I know that the Lord is speaking. I didn't pick this up from the internet church. So no charge no fault. They were exhausted. They were pulling out their hair. They couldn't find anything. I look at my life, I, 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 because being in this neighborhood, neighbors, and um, I'm conscious, Lord, help me to, to be a reflection of you. Um, when things happen, when things go wrong, um, uh, that I'm responding in the right way, because they're watching. 
This church is being watched. This church is being watched in this community. They know of us. They have heard what we have done during Grenfell and other things that we have done. And they're watching us. And though lies and rumors have gone out against this church, but you see, our conduct will prove them wrong. God is the one who will vindicate. It's what we do. If I try to utilize my energy to try and vindicate myself, you're just going to waste your time. And a lot of Christians utilize their energy to sort of vindicate themselves. And God is saying, shh, continue to live for me. Continue to be a light to those around your family members who don't want to talk to you. Who don't like you for some reason. Your work colleagues, your neighbors, they don't, and there's always neighbors that you may not get on with. They may be the neighbor from hell. What are you then? If they are the neighbors from hell, what are you? <laughs> huh? You're supposed to be Christ-like. You're supposed to be showing love. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. You know they hate your guts. Good morning. God bless you. Happy New Year to you. Oh. Ouch, somebody say. Not me. No way. You don't know what she has done. You don't know what he has done. You don't know what they're doing. I don't need to. I know what you should be doing. You should be being a light. A light. Are you that? Listen. 2020, switch on the light, would you? Switch the light on. If you have not been a good representation of the Lord Jesus Christ, you must go into repentance. You must tell the Lord that you are sorry for being a bad example. And not being the Christian that you should be towards those who have ill-treated you. The Bible says we will be ill-treated. Hello, what Bible are you reading? You are going to be ill-treated in your place of work. Oh Lord. Amen. My, 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 my. Amen. And it says because he was what? <coughs> Because Daniel was faithful, so he tells them when we are faithful, we're going to get the attention of God. Doing what I'm supposed to do. And doing it faithfully, consistently. We're talking about attracting favor, how we get favor. So this was with God. Daniel had favor with God. Because he was faithful. He refused to compromise. He refused to bow. We know about his, his prayer life. Wow. Lord, may we have a prayer life like Daniel. It just was consistent. Amen. And God took pleasure in Daniel's communication with him. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. This is, this is a type of Christ. When we stand up ourselves besides Daniel, oh my gosh, we fall down. We can just say, oh Lord, wretched man that I am. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to be that example that I should be to those around. And even when we get upset, which we would get upset because we're human beings and sometimes we behave in a way and say things that we should not say, uh, we must realize when we have done wrong because surely the Holy Spirit who lives in you will convict you. The way how you responded, the way how you behaved, that was wrong. Do we just brush it aside? I think many times we just brush that aside. In our stubbornness and in our pride, we just brush it aside and we continue. And we don't know we're doing ourselves a disservice. We're disqualifying ourselves. 
from God's favor and for what he wants to do in our lives. God is watching you in your place of work. God is watching you in what you do. Angels are recording. Look at the next verse, shall we? Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. This is one of the things that the enemy is going to use in the last days. The law. I was showing this. But we see nothing is new under the sun. Nothing is new under the sun. The enemy will, is going to uh, enact laws knowing that as Christians, it's contrary. What are we going to do? What are we going to say? Oh, we're going to be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. I've got to still sign this contract even though it says I agree with this and I agree with that. What happens if a job depending on that? That you've got to sign something that you know morally it conflicts with your belief system. It's happening today. Isn't it? Doctors have lost their jobs. People in big profession have lost their jobs. One could just as well, it's my vocation. I'm not going to provide for my family. And so we just sign, God understands. No fault could be found in Daniel. He will not bow. He will not compromise. And the reason why he was so strong in his faith, because of his prayer life. He had a relationship with his God. His God was real to him. Therefore, there was confidence in his God that if something negative unto us happened, he knows that God is in control. Many Christians haven't got that testimony because they're full of religion, not relationship. That's why in the midst of pressure in your place of work, you end up bowing. Because it doesn't look as if God could deal with that situation. Or you, they say, you haven't the confidence in God to deal with that situation. So many in place of work, they bow, they compromise. And they just brush it aside. Oh, it's work. And they just go on. Don't realize what it's doing to them spiritually. How it's hindering them. How it's stopping God from really working in your life because you have made yourself disqualified for service in the kingdom of God and for what God wants to do. Look at the last verse. So these governors and administrators came before the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. And so you could imagine these guys says, okay, we know that this Daniel prays three times a day at this specific time. We have watched him go into his house, opened up his window that face towards Jerusalem, so, this can only be concocted by Lucifer himself. Can only be when they could find no fault in you. And you can imagine they, 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 they gather because there's a good number of them. What can we do? How can we stop this guy? We've got to stop him. We've got to stop him. And bam, Lucifer comes in the midst and says, right, why don't we flatter the king? Oh, let's flatter him, shall we? Let's Go to him and says, King Darius, we believe that you should sign this decree that anyone who's making requests cannot make requests to anyone else, any other God but you, for one month. We believe that you deserve this, King Darius. 
Wow, you are a great leader. There's never been a leader like yourself. And I think the people should respect that. So what we have come up with, because we, we all agree, that you should sign this decree. For one month, no one is to pray to any other God or make any request to anybody but you, King. Oh, stroke his ego. Let's stroke his ego. And that's what they did. Not knowing what was behind it. He was so full of himself by the time they finished explaining to him that he forgot about Daniel. Because he knew about Daniel. He, he knew Daniel's devotion to his God. But he was lost in all of the flattery. Flattery. The Bible talks about flattery as well. How are we going to be careful of flattery? If you're insecure and you need popular and, 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 uh, and you love flattery, the devil knows exactly how to trap you. To trap you, to make you feel good about yourself. Saying all these wonderful things. And so this happened with, uh, 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 to, to Daniel. And um, it, it's amazing that, because the Bible goes on to tell us that Daniel knew about this decree. And so, you know, I'm putting myself in Daniel's shoe. And I'm thinking, well, pray, yes, but I'll open the window for everyone to see you. <laughs> what are you going to open the window for? Don't open the window, just go into your yard, go into your house, and just pray. <laughs> okay? You don't have to open the window, Daniel, you know. God can still hear you without the window opening. Hello. <laughs> you know, when I read, Really, I think he didn't have to go through it. But he did. It was a custom. It was, you know, Jerusalem. They, they looked to Jerusalem one day to repatriate back to Jerusalem. And, you know, I, I think Daniel had the, the notion because he, by then, by then, he, had, he was in his 80s. Daniel was in his 80s by then. And he had a rule under several leaders. Several leaders, and God had him to be in that position for a divine purpose. And this was to, to have the Jews to be repatriated back to their homeland. And because he was around in, in the time of Cyrus, and he, he was in that position of influence, that he would have influenced Cyrus at that time, that Cyrus wrote a decree that the children of Israel would return back and we will finance their returning. We will finance the building of the temple. Do you know why you're where you are? Why are you where you are? What has God got in his book concerning where you are? Has it come to fruition? Have you fought the plan of God for where you are? There's a purpose why you're working where you're working. You can't just think, well, I'm getting a salary at the end of the month, and that's why I'm there. You're not there just for that. Listen, please. You're not there just for that. There are people in that place of work that God has ordained to bring to himself that he wants to use. And you are supposed to be that light, that reflected. Oh my Lord. It could be uh, 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 those people or individuals that are behaving so hostile to you that he wants to save and use as a preacher. That you cannot see because all you see is the hostility and the animosity and the unfairness and the lies and the way you're being ill-treated. You know that God can turn that person around? Yes. But if you're so consumed in the circumstances, you're not going to see that. You're going to end up, I don't like this person. I dislike this person. Person. So I'm not going to have any communication. I'm going to behave in the same way. You are a Christian. That's not allowed. I don't think I've ever touched on anything to do with work before. 
I know this is the Holy Spirit church and I pray God that you're, that we do not harden our hearts and because you've gone so far in what you're doing you're thinking oh well whatever will be if God wants that to happen it will happen no you are supposed to instigate change where you need to humble yourself humble yourself Otherwise, this Amen. year, you're going to just be confessing Amen. the favor of God. You're going to be confessing breakthrough, restoration, and nothing will happen. You will come to the end of 2020, and nothing happens to you. We're going to stop right here because time is gone. Amen. Amen. By God's grace, we, we're going to pick up on um, some of the issues here that God wants us to implement in our own lives. And the less bow our heads, shall we?